Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be making enchiladas rojas, just the way my grandmother used to make. I'm going to be hand dipping my corn tortillas in salsa, filling them with cheese and onion. You can top them with the fresh ingredients of your choice and you can also fill them with maybe something like chicken or beef. So if you stick around, I'm going to show you how I make these delicious enchiladas. To get started, I'm going to be using half of a medium to small onion, 10 guajillo chilies. These are dried chilies, and I will be removing the stems and seeds and giving them a rinse. And here I also have three cloves of fresh garlic. Okay, so I've placed all of my cleaned stems and seeds removed from my chili pods. Here I also have the onion and garlic. I place it in a pot. So now what I'm going to do is fill my pot with water to submerge the chilies, onions, and garlic. And I'm going to take it over to my stove and bring the water up to a boil. Once my pot of water comes up to boil, I'm going to shut off the heat, cover it with a lid, and allow my chilies to steep for about 20 minutes or until they are soft and pliable. In the meantime, I'm going to work on my cheese and onion filling. So I'm going to be using 10 ounces of queso fresco and 10 ounces of Oaxaca cheese, or you could use the cheese combination of your choice. I'm also going to be using two scallions and the other half of my small onion. Okay, so here in a bowl, I've already shredded my cheeses and crumbled the queso fresco. And by the way, I did reserve maybe an ounce of queso fresco as a garnish or topping. So now I'm going to add my chopped onion and I'm also going to add the chopped scallions. Now, another ingredient that my grandmother would add sometimes is optional. This is cilantro and I like it, but I know some of you may not like the taste of cilantro, so you can exclude it if you don't like it, it's optional. But if you do like it, it goes well. I'm also going to add some cracked black pepper. That's not really something my grandmother did. I don't know, I just felt like maybe pepper would work with this. <laughs> So I'm just going to give it a mix and the filling is done. Okay, so now I'm going to prepare my corn tortillas. Here I have a little pan preheating. To that I'm going to add some oil, maybe a quarter cup of oil works. And what I'm going to do is just pass my corn tortillas into the hot oil, not even for 15 seconds. You're really not trying to fry these until they are crispy. You just want them to fry to become flexible and pliable. Now heating them through the hot oil actually maintains the texture once you dip them into your enchilada sauce. And this will keep the shape and texture of your corn tortilla without it disintegrating. If you skip this step, you may encounter a problem after dipping them in the sauce. By the way, I do want to mention, with this recipe, you can definitely make somewhere between 12 and 14 enchiladas. Now, if you really play your cards right, you might be able to yield 16, but I normally get around 14 with this recipe. Okay, so now that I'm done warming and heating through my corn tortillas through the oil, I'm going to work on my enchilada sauce. So first, before I start pureeing the sauce, I'm going to make a chicken broth. I am using chicken bouillon powder with hot water mixed together. You could use your own homemade chicken broth or stock or store-bought chicken broth, it all works. So for this recipe, you will need two cups of hot water and two teaspoons of chicken bouillon powder. I'm actually making double that amount because I'm going to use some for rice that I'm making later. But for this recipe, two cups of chicken broth works great. And I will be listing the ingredients and measurements in the description below. Now I'm going to puree my soaked chilies. So what I'm going to do is add all of my soaked chilies, onion and garlic into my blender and personally, I do not like the taste of using the soaking liquid from the chilies. I feel like it adds a slight bitterness to the sauce. So this is why I opt to use chicken broth. You definitely can use what you are used to or what you prefer, but this is just a preference. So now I'm going to add two cups of chicken broth. I'm going to puree this well. Then I'm going to pass it through a strainer into my preheated pan with oil and I'm going to start cooking this sauce 
and I will be adding some extra seasonings and spices. Now the seasonings and spices are definitely up to you, but I like to add one teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm also going to be adding one teaspoon of onion powder. Again, a lot of these seasonings and spices are to your preference. If you don't have these spices, you can leave it out. It's really a good sauce without. That's the way my grandmother did it. But I kind of like to add something extra. So here, I'm going to add a half teaspoon of ground cumin. And just like cilantro, I know some people love cumin and some don't. I actually like the flavor of ground cumin in my enchilada sauce. And honestly, my grandmother, she would add it if she had it. And if she was out, she'd leave it out. And we loved it all the same. So it's definitely up to you. Now I'm going to add maybe a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of salt. Things like salt and seasonings and spices are definitely to your taste and preferences. So add to taste. After giving it a good mix you'll want to let it gently simmer for about five minutes on a medium heat so after five minutes of simmering your sauce i'm ready to put these together so you're going to dip it in the sauce fill it with the cheese filling and roll it and place it on a plate now there are so many different ways to make these enchiladas i actually prefer to dip it in the hot sauce slightly burning my fingers be careful <laughs> and then rolling it and just adding it to a plate topping it with toppings and serving it. But if you are the type of person that really wants a melty cheese on the inside, then what you'll do is dip your tortilla in the sauce, fill it with the cheese filling, and put it back onto an oiled griddle just to heat it through. But you really have to be careful when you reheat these and put these back in a hot pan because, you know, they can break, tear, or fall apart. And this is just the way my grandmother did. As she assembled the enchiladas, we just would stand in line and grab our plate. And they were so delicious. So after plating them, you can definitely add more sauce to this. And I'm going to top it with some extra onion, some more cheese, and I'm also going to add some Mexican crema. This is just a table cream. You could do sour cream, some fresh lettuce. The toppings are definitely up to you. Even without the toppings, these are really good enchiladas. And they definitely remind me of something my grandmother would make with all of her heart to feed the kids. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.